This Bible study is going to be called Doing the Will of the Father. Turn to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. This could apply to many, many preachers on TV, TV preachers, televangelists. Jesus speaking, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of of my Father, which is in heaven. Let's read that again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh yes, TBN crowd, they prophesied in his name, all right. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is sin, wickedness, evil. Probably the scariest words that somebody, a churchgoer, could ever hear out of the mouth of Jesus. I never knew you. Next verse. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them. So not only got to, do you have to hear what Jesus says, but you got to do what Jesus says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So, is your house built on a rock? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Now listen carefully. This is Paul speaking to the church at Corinth. Corinth was a, church, um, a city in Greece. The New Testament was written in Greek. Paul's letters were written to churches in Greek cities in Greece. So listen carefully. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What cloud? The cloud that led Israel out of the wilderness out of Egypt, in Egypt. Out of Egypt. Right? Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. The Red Sea. Remember when it parted? For Israel, for when Moses touched the sea and it parted, they went through on dry land and then it closed up on Pharaoh's army. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. The manna, remember? Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Remember, Moses tapped the, hit the rock twice and it, uh, it spouted water. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Let's go back to where we were before. Okay, Matthew 7, verse 24. Jesus speaking, Thereosoever, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. we got to build our house upon the rock, and that rock is Christ, people. 
And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were the Jewish copyists of the law, the Torah. So Jesus had authority, but those who wrote the words and copied the Bible, because back in those days they didn't have a printing press, you had to copy the Bible by hand. They knew the Bible well, but they didn't have power and authority. Oh, no. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 46. Jesus speaking. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak to him. Um, well, Jesus is going to answer in a minute. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 18 and verse 10. Jesus speaking. Matthew 18, 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Better not hate one of the little children, people. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Did you know that the little ones, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven? Did you know the little ones have angels? Oh yeah, that's what Jesus says. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. How think ye? If a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so, be that he findeth it. Verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Very important. It is not the will, even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. See, children are very precious to the Lord. Maybe that's why uh, the Lord didn't want uh, witches and sodomites uh, becoming public school teachers, you think? Maybe? I don't know. All right, turn to Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, 
We're supposed to ask forgiveness of sins. And we're supposed to forgive others that are indebted or who have hurt us. And we're to ask to be delivered from the evil. And that the Father's will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Turn to John 14.21. Jesus speaking. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Very interesting, huh? All right, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot. There was two Judases, okay? Judas is just the Greek rendering of Judah, or Jew. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay. In Matthew 22, verse 35, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, Now this lawyer is not a lawyer like you have a lawyer today. This is, a lawyer was a, basically a doctor of the law. He knew the laws of Moses inside and out. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, he's asking Jesus a question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Now, let's face it. If you love the Lord, you're, you're not going to worship an idol. You're not going to commit blasphemy or sacrilege. Right? And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I mean, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal their goat, right? Or kill their cow or, or murder him and steal his wife. You know, love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And if you lived in Sodom, um, I would suggest you move. Just my opinion, you know. But that's just me saying. So what did Jesus say in John 13 and verse 34? A new commandment I give unto you. You hear people say, Oh, Paul changed the law. No, it was Jesus. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. I can think of two places in the uh, New Testament where the disciples, the apostles, were arguing with each other who was going to be the greatest in heaven. 
You know, they were fighting each other. So what does Jesus say? A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Because if you love one another, you're not going to be arguing over who's going to be the, you know, who's going to be the greatest. Peter or Mark or, you know, John or whoever, you know. In Psalms 111 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Psalms 112 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. In Matthew chapter 19. In verse 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he's on the right path here. He's asking the right one how to get eternal life, right? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Now the Muslims will say that Jesus is denying that he's good in God. I don't believe that one bit. I think Jesus is asking him a question. Why do you call me good? There's only one, and that's God. Are you still calling me good? Are you acknowledging that I am Emmanuel, God in the flesh? And that's what uh, Emmanuel means, God with us. I believe that Jesus is questioning, asking him, are you acknowledging that I'm God? That's my opinion, anyways. And he said unto them, him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? Ah, which commandments am I going to keep? You know, there's ten of them, and uh, I keep nine of them really good, but that tenth one, I, you know, it's kind of rough, right? He saith unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus saith unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. You see, some people love the Lord, and some people love riches. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. What does everlasting mean? Forever? 
and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 7. Verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. Now the Pharisees were a denomination of Jews. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. Oh, they're sinners. They didn't wash their hands before they ate bread. Verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, Hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Jesus speaking in John 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. What? Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that ye, he may abide with you forever. Another comforter. Forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, and ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Okay? We read this before, but it's worth repeating. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. 
Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard now, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before, it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do arise, let us go hence. Okay, turn to the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 1. Jesus speaking. I am the true vine. The vine was the uh, symbol of Israel, the fig tree of Judah. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You know, think about it. If you're working a full-time job and you're paying your mortgage payments and mostly interest and you don't have, because you're working two jobs, you don't have any time for the ministry, maybe the Lord's going to purge that fruit so that you're not the hamster on the wheel just all this motion, but you're going nowhere. Maybe he'll take away what you, your distractions so that you can serve him better. I've seen that in my life. If you looked at me with worldly things, I've got a few things, but um, I'm not one with great possessions, that's for sure. But sometimes the Lord will Take away things out of our life so that we can serve him. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Isn't that what Christ did for us? He laid down his life for his friends. Verse 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant, servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Tell that to the free will Baptists. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Oh yeah, God's got a chosen people. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Do you ever wonder why the Yeshua crowd 
uh, oftentimes rejects the name of Jesus? Well, the, the New Testament was written in Greek. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. In the Greek, it's Jesus. It's not Yeshua. Yeshua does not appear anywhere in the New Testament. It does not appear. Maybe that's why they don't like the name Jesus. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of this, not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And when they're saying that, they're, they're talking about using your own words against you. They're not talking about, you know, keeping his sayings. They're not doing what he says to do. They're trying to trick him by using his own words against him. Okay? Unto the government authorities. Verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no covering for their sin. He that hateth me, this is Jesus speaking, he that hateth me hateth my father also. You know, those that hate Jesus, Jesus says if you hate him, you hate the Father, you hate God the Father also. So when people tell you, well, you know, Jews just don't believe in Jesus, but they have God the Father, is that, what is Jesus saying here? He that hateth me, hateth my Father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. What works did Jesus do? He raised the dead back to life. He made the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. No other, you know, there might have been a couple prophets that did, you know, individual things. I think it was Elisha, Elisha uh, raised up somebody from the dead. You know, and then there was another one that cured somebody of leprosy. And But Jesus cast out devils. He did, he did everything that all the old prophets combined did and more. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay, go to Titus chapter 1, verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he might be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You want to know what a gainsayer is? That's somebody that preaches for money. They say and they gain. 
You want to see an example of that? Turn on TBN. You can talk. You can look at Creflo. Send me a dollar. Actually, send me a lot of dollars, but. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers. Vain means worthless. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Who's the circumcision? The Jews. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of their own, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. There, wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. I've been uh, chastised from people for rebuking people sharply. Well, this is what Paul says. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables. In other words, don't listen to Jewish fables, their stories, their lies. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. What's a reprobate? A reprobate is somebody that could do nothing good. Nothing. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto, unto every good work, reprobate. 1 John 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him, Jesus. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And that's 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. 1 John 3 and verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sights, his sight. Uh, let's see, let's skip to verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. 1 John 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Hmm. 2 John chapter 1 and verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Revelation 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. Wroth means anger. Angry, mad, peoed. Wroth and wrath have very similar meanings. Almost spelled the same. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, one, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, two. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and 
have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Evidently, you could be a Jew and keep the commandments of God, but if you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ, it doesn't sound like the dragon would be mad at you, does it? Revelation 14 and verse 12. Here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Ooh. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. And, uh, oh, verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alpha alphabet. Omega is the last. That's A to Z, people, for you, those of you in English. I am Alpha and Omega. And these morons that, that take these words and substitute Hebrew for them? Sorry, the Greek, New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride, bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of the book, of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So if you add to or take away from this book, if you add to, you're going to get plagues. If you take away, you're in big trouble. God's going to take away your part from the book of life. So when they take away, when the uh, Hebrew roots people take away the Alpha and Omega, and insert the Aleph Tav. Are they adding to or taking from the prophecy of this book? That's a good question. Verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonica, another church in Greece, a Greek city. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. In everything give thanks. Can you do that? If you're thrown in jail for your testimony of Jesus Christ, can you give thanks? Sometimes it's not easy. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you in everything give thanks in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. Let's go to verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God. Please God. So ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. 
that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay, turn to Ephesians chapter 5, starting verse 14 through, uh, I guess, 20. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. That could apply just as much then as it could today as just it could apply today just as much as back then you think uh, America's any better or any worse than the Roman Empire back in the day I doubt it I really do see then see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 6 and verse 46, Jesus speaking, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Good question. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Okay, go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. We'll read from there. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Honest conversation. That, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Or, I'm sorry, and for the praise of them that do well. You see, unless a law contradicts the law of the Lord, we're to do it. Now, um, you know, if uh, back in the days of Moses, when they commanded all the firstborn male Hebrew children to be thrown into the river and drowned, well, you are killing your own children. The Bible says, "Thou shalt not kill." You know, if they tell, if if the governor tells you to kill, you're not to do it. But if he says, if you get caught jaywalking, you got to pay twenty six dollars and thirty two cents. Well, that you got to do. Submit yourselves to every ordinance man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Do you know what maliciousness means? It means being evil on purpose and doing bad things to somebody else. You know, we have a lot of liberty in Christ, and you're not to use that liberty for evil purposes. As free and not using your liberty as a cloak for maliciousness, 
but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. As much as I dislike Obama's laws, the Bible says, honor the king. Let's face it, would Obama be president if God the Father didn't want him to be president? And the answer is no, he wouldn't be. If Hillary gets elected, it's because God wants her elected. Let's face it, people. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Uh, froward is the evil ones. So we're to be subject to our masters with all fear, but not only the good and the gentle, but also the bad ones too. In Matthew 6, verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In Micah verse, chapter 6 and verse 8, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? So what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. In Psalms 40 and verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. In 2 Peter verse three and, uh, chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You ever hear the famous internet preachers saying that repentance is optional? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Oh yeah. That's Peter speaking. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole manner. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Right? That's what Jesus, well, paraphrasing pretty much, that's what Jesus said, right? Matthew 22 Verse 36 on, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yep, Jesus changed the law, summed it all up. Turn the Ten Commandments into two. And we are to keep his words and love him by keeping his law, his commandments. And that is doing the will of God the Father. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministry. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.